We're glad that you've joined us for our online worship today. We hope that it's a blessing to you and that God is speaking to you through the Holy Spirit. Have you ever felt like you're a stranger in this world? You look around you and you see things that you just don't understand and that just don't make sense. You feel like you're out of place. Well, if you're a Christian, you are. This world is not our home. Our home is in heaven. And today I want to talk to you about that. Our scripture comes from the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter, the first 11 verses. Familiar scripture to most of us. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you knew me, you would know my Father also. And from now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we'll be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. May God add his blessing to his holy word. These are familiar verses that I have read. I've read this scripture often as we gather together to bury one of our loved ones. We've walked with God's acre together, and I've read these words as words of assurance that we would see our loved ones again. Today I speak of this scripture in a different setting and share with you the promise that Jesus gives to all who will make him Lord of their lives. He begins by telling us, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus knew that we would not get through this life without times of trouble and disappointment. But he promises us that we can have an untroubled heart even in the midst of a troubled life. None of us live in this life without challenges, without disappointments, without hurt. Yet Jesus assures us that in the trials of life, we will not be overcome if we put our faith in him. He said to us, you believe in God, believe also in me. The Scottish preacher Alexander McLaren writes, what separates Jesus from all the other religious teachers is not only the clearness and tenderness with which he reiterates the truth about the Father's love, or about morality, or justice, or truth and goodness, but the peculiarity of his call to the world, which is believe in me. Jesus has told us in John 16, 33, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Jesus assures us that he is greater than any of the trials which we will face. He tells you that he knows you by your name, that you are precious to him. Understand that he gave his life so that you might be redeemed. He invites us to accept that peace and bring him into our lives and accept and make him Lord of our life. He's telling us that the trouble to the tribulation and confusion that we have in this world is not found by finding a path that we need to follow 
or a formula that we want to live by. It's found in a relationship with Jesus Christ and making him our Lord. Jesus wants to be a part of your life, not just the solution to your troubles. If we trust in him and we walk in the way that he leads us, we will avoid many of the decisions that lead to problems in our life. Jesus was speaking to a group of disciples who had been with him three years. He was telling them that he would be leaving them and that was awfully difficult for them to hear. And yet he tells us, even though you won't see me, I will be with you through the power of the Holy Spirit. You will still have my direction. You'll still have my guidance. I will be in your life. And he gives to you and I that very same assurance. How much time do we spend with him each day? How much do we look to him for the guidance in our life that we need? When we struggle with decisions, do we go to him first? Or is he only a last resort? He's there for us, and he wants us to come to him. Then he tells us the great news. In my father's house are many mansions, and I'm going there to prepare a place for you. Jesus didn't wonder about heaven. He came from there. He knew what heaven was. He could tell us about it. And he told us exactly what to expect. There is a place for you there. Author and teacher and evangelist and pastor Chuck Swindoll writes, during the interval of the time between the Lord's departure from this earth and his return, he is involved in two projects. One, to prepare a place for his children. And two, to prepare his children for that place. He's engaged right now in preparing heaven for his own. He's also working through the Holy Spirit to prepare us for our life and eternity with him. It's his desire that we be with him. When he told his disciples this, he could see what people other than he could never see. Many such dwelling places in heaven. Millions, maybe even billions of people from every tribe and language and nation gathered together in his father's house. I can just envision Jesus smiling when he was telling them this. Many of God's people, brothers and sisters, brought together and taken to mansions that he's prepared for us. What a delight that must have been for our Lord to talk about. What a delight and a joy that'll be for us one day. Then Jesus gives to us this great promise. I go and I prepare a place for you. Because your name is written in the book of life, you have a home in heaven and it's awaiting you. You have a reservation made for you in heaven. No one arrives there unexpectedly. Our Lord has heard you commit your life to him and he knows his own. And he tells us that where I am, there you may be also. You're gonna be with the Lord one day. It's his good pleasure to take you to the kingdom. And I believe that he will watch with joy when we're taken to the place where we'll spend eternity. And Jesus will enjoy the look on our face, the joy in our hearts when we see that place that he's prepared for us. We will be with Jesus in a place that is beyond our imagination. The joy of being in heaven is not what is there, but it's the fact that we're going to be with Jesus. Heaven isn't glorious because the streets are made of gold. It isn't amazing because it has pearly gates in the front or the voices of angels singing praises constantly. Heaven is heaven because Jesus is there and we'll be there with him one day. 
Jesus was telling his disciples this, and it was more than they could comprehend. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How could we possibly know the way? He was open and he was honest with the Lord. He had been with the Lord for three years, and now Jesus is telling him that they're gonna, he's going to be leaving them. And that was more than they could imagine. And probably when he said, I'm going to be leaving you, that was about all they heard of this verse. But Jesus was giving them encouragement. He said, we don't know where you're going. Jesus didn't chastise them. He openly invited them to ask him what they didn't understand. They understood something that we who follow Jesus need to know. We can ask him whatever we don't understand. It's his will to give us peace about what he has in mind for us. It's his good will to reveal to us that which we don't understand. There will be a few things that we'll need to wait until we get to heaven for God to explain them to us. We won't understand them this side of heaven. But I sort of believe that when we get to heaven, that those things may not even matter there. The glory of heaven and what God has prepared for us will overshine anything we wonder about here in this world. But we like that the disciples need to understand we don't understand everything and we need to take it to the Lord. They felt no need to be timid with their questions. They knew that the Lord didn't want them kept in the dark no more than he wants us to be kept in the dark. Pray and ask God to show you what you don't understand. It's his good pleasure to do so. Jesus answered Thomas by telling him, I'm going to the Father. And he didn't say that he was a way to God. He said he was the only way to God. He said, no one comes to the Father but by me. What is Jesus saying to us? Without a way, you can't get there. Jesus is the way. Without the truth, you cannot be sure of your salvation. Jesus is the truth. And he's the eternal life for which we hope. Far greater than this life will ever be. This is a consistent theme of the Bible. God wants us to be with him. God wants to be God in our life. Exodus 20 verses 2 and 3 says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. You shall have no other gods before me. God has good for you. And he wants a relationship with you that exceeds all else so that you can enjoy that fully. There are those who reject Christianity because of this statement. They feel like Christians are bigots. And this is far from the truth. Christianity is the most tolerant embracing of other cultures of any religion on earth. It has the most urgency to translate the word of God into other languages so that others may understand the blessings of God. The scripture shows us that no one has ever come to Jesus in search of his grace and his forgiveness and been turned away. No one. The criticisms of the early church were that they would take anyone, rich or poor, slave or free, woman or man, Greek or bar barbarian, it made no difference. You were invited to come to Jesus. All were invited, all were accepted, all were welcome. They were welcomed on the common ground of the truth of Jesus Christ. And we are as well. But to leave that common ground is spiritual suicide, both now and for eternity. And if that sounds exclusive to you, understand who it is who is telling us that he is the way. It's the one who is the incarnate word of God, who became flesh and lived among us. The one who reveals the Father to us, 
Who else could make that claim? Who else could do that? And Jesus answered that saying, he said, if you had known me, you would know the Father too. And he explains why he is the only way to the Father. He was and he is the only perfect representation of the Father. To know Jesus is to know God. Jesus showed the love of God by going to a cross. He showed the power of God in his resurrection. No other religion can show us that. If you go to the grave of Buddha, you will find the remains of Buddha. If you go to the remains of Muhammad, you will find his remains there. If you go to the tomb where Jesus was, you'll find nothing. That tomb is empty. He is interceding for us before the Father in heaven. When we want to know what God is like, we look to Jesus. When we see the love of Jesus, we see the love of the Father. While Jesus was here, he healed many of the sick and injured. He was doing the work of the Father. He showed his love and his power to us. He was teaching people to come to him and to love him and to know that they were loved. That's the love of the Father shown through Jesus. And he worked in this world, showing his Father's care for his children. He showed that he and the Father are one. No mere man could ever make such a claim. Only the Son of God. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Believe that the Father and I are one. But if you have trouble believing that, then believe in the works that you have seen me do. The disciples had been there for three years with Jesus. They had seen him turn water into wine. They had seen him walk on the water. They had seen him raise the dead and do things that no one other than the Son of God could do. And for you and I, while we haven't seen Jesus in person, we can each look at difficult moments in our life where we wondered how we would get through it. And we did. The hand of God was upon us. It wasn't luck. It wasn't a coincidence. God was working in our lives. God was blessing us. We can't make our own way to heaven. We depend on what the Lord has freely done for us to take us to the glory that he has prepared for us. We live among the blessings that he gives us in this life. His will is that we accept what he has done for us, that we share his love with others as it was shared to us. Jesus is the way to heaven. Let him take you there. Let us pray. Most precious Lord, we thank you for your way, your truth, for the life that you have prepared for us, the gift of eternal life that you have given to us. Lead us, O oh Lord, and let us follow you. Let us hear your word, trust your peace, and be in your presence. We pray, Lord, that you will give to us strength to share that good news with a world that needs to hear it that we will reach out and trust you more and be your witness in this world. This we pray in your holy name. Amen.